Hello everyone, my name is Super Reploid CLE and welcome back to another tutorial video. Today I'm gonna to be doing a tutorial on how to do chapter six's graded project. Now, before I get started with this video, I'd like to take the time to say that this graded project right here is by far a balance between simple and of course intermediate because well it only focuses on interactivity and of course you're actually engaging the audience during your presentation via PowerPoint. Now before I get started, if you have not seen my chapters two and four greater project that will be provided at the outro of this video so this focuses on breaking the cycle of abuse this is the PowerPoint that we're going to be working on today on this video so without any hesitation let's get to it as you can see I got the instructions pulled up now when it comes to downloading the stuff pertaining to the greater project for this chapter now before I go any further um this is for a PowerPoint class I'm sure because well usually this happened to Microsoft Word class as well because I took that already last semester so if you are taking PowerPoint, usually at the beginning of the semester, for those who are taking PowerPoint, you will see that you have the simulation training and of course the simulation exam and only, and only one graded project for chapters 1 through 4. So after you get done with chapters 1 through 4, this time on chapters 5 through 8, you do not have just the simulation. I mean, you do not have the simulation exam, you just have the simulation training and of course you have two graded projects this time. One of them are the assets. I mean, one of them is the assessment and the other one is just the actual capstone graded project so I'm gonna walk you guys through this one because well it's 14 steps and like I said the difficulty of this graded project that I'm about to show you a tutorial on how to do to earn a hundred this time is uh, intermediate and simple at the same time a balance between the two like I said okay so in this PowerPoint we're gonna focus on a PowerPoint called breaking the cycle of abuse project description in the following project, you will add an email address, a web page hyperlink, a link to an existing file, attach actions to shapes, create a navigation bar, and create and test animations, action buttons, and triggers. Now, it's also focused on the action buttons and, of course, the hyperlink as well. So, kind of like when it comes to, uh, yeah, something like that. You link the uh, text to a different story, but you want to make sure that the actual, okay, so if you were to link to a file, if you were to make a hyperlink link into a file, you want to make sure that the file stays in the directory because once you enter that file in the hyperlink, you don't want to move because if you move it or delete it, if you trigger anything to remove it from its directory, it will not work for that particular hyperlink. You will have to change directories and of course go from there. All right, so instructions. For the purpose of the grading project, you are required to blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the first step is simple, which is editing well it's basically anything it's just as long as you have some of these details that fits then make sure that you're um, doing this for PowerPoint okay that's done number two create a hyperlink on slide 9 that links the text crime victim advocate program to the web link right here and include the screen tip click to read additional information so on step 2 we're going to go to slide 9 down here and we're going to create a hyperlink. Now you can now you're going to create two hyperlinks in this slide. The first one we're focusing on is crime victim advocate program. So you want to select the text. Now you can do this two ways regarding the hyperlink. You can either right click and click on hyperlink or you can go to the insert tab and click on hyperlink. Now usually when it comes to the new advanced features like these, usually I just go to the tab on the ribbon and of course go from there and but the quickest way to get there is to right click on the text you select it and click on hyperlink so we're gonna go right here to hyperlink and we're going to link the address that it gave us to the hyper the text that we selected so you can select the text right here don't include the period though make sure you have www also because well it's recommended that you select the link because manually typing it because well even though it will lead to the actual page itself, it is still required because my IT lab actually requires you to go a bit more thorough when it comes to doing these steps, which is crazy, I know, but that's the way of doing assignments on my IT lab when it comes to grading projects and stuff, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so it's recommended that you copy the link, <coughs> pardon me, click on copy, and go back, right click on the address bar, and click paste. Now, as you can see, the link is applied. Now, we're going to apply the screen tip, which is click to read additional information. So, you want to click on screen tip and 
type and click to read additional information. Now don't include a period on this one either. So that done, that completes step two. Then click OK. And as you can see, you will see that the color scheme has been changed. And of course, there is an underline of the text we made to a hyperlink. So you can test it out by right clicking and of course, open hyperlink. Now, once you do that, it pulls up the page. Let's go back to the assignment. All right, so next, we're going to link the text obtaining protective orders to the Word documents that you download. You should download that's the PowerPoint and the instructions. So this time, we're going to link a file to a text called obtaining protective orders. So we're going to go to the same slide again, and we're going to go to the same step. This time, we're going to link a file to the second text that we're supposed to make it to a hyperlink. So we're going to select obtaining protective orders on slide 9, then click on hyperlink, and then locate the file regarding the text that we selected. So we're going to look for the file, if I can find it somewhere. Uh, here it is. The one that says order. So click OK. And once you do that, we're going to test out the hyperlink. And as you can see, it will open up the web document. I mean, the, not the web document, but the Word document. So you can see that there's obtaining protective orders right here. All this stuff pertains to orders. So that completes step three. Step four, position the insertion point after the colon and space the following contact. Then type in student at your school.com and then press spacebar. Now, when you press spacebar, it automatically changes to a hyperlink. So we're going to type in, well, first we're going to go right here same slide for more information contact space after the colon and type in student at your school dot com okay so after that press space and it applies a hyperlink step five we're going to insert an action for the tension shape on slide two so that when it is clicked the viewer is sent to the phase one attention building slide select each of the remaining shapes and convert them to action buttons that link to the appropriate slide. All right, so we're going to go to slide two on the PowerPoint. And as you can see, there's a chart where it shows four buttons. You can see that there's tension, violence, remorse, and reconciliation, and it wants us to create an action for the tension shape on slide two. So once you click on the, on the slide, it'll automatically take you to the slide where it talks about that particular topic. So to do that, we're going to click on the shape right here Go to Insert tab and click on Action. Once you do that, we're going to, you can see that there is the action settings. You have mouse click and mouse over. Now, once you have mouse over, it will automatically go there. But we want to do mouse click. So the keyword to this one is link. So go to Hyperlink 2, select Hyperlink 2. And you will see that there is a list of slides that list of sources that you can use to link the particular shape to where you want it to go to once you click on it on the slideshow so now even though tension is on the next slide usually you can go to the next slide once you click on once you click once on the uh, shape or just click on the next slide in general but for insurance sake I would recommend going to slide and then click on the topic that I want you to click on to so that way when you click on the button it'll go to that topic so you want to select tension building so click OK on that then click OK and you can test it out in the slideshow if you like but it's guaranteed that you work just as long as you click on slide first then click on topic in the action settings feature so once you do that do the remaining shapes as well so we got violence action hyperlink to slide violence so as you can see it's in a different sequence so it's recommended to use slide instead of the next slide because even though that particular topic is on the next slide just do slide just to be on the safe side so violence for this one then click OK remorse action hyperlink to remorse apply and reconciliation action hyperlink to slide of reconciliation and apply and that completes step 5 step 6 Create an action button, beginning link to slide 2. The cycle of abuse, and slide it to 0.5 inches high and 0.5 inches wide. 
and set the horizontal position at 3.47 from the top left corner in a vertical position at 7 inches from the top left corner. So we're going to create an action button. And to do that, we're going to go to Shapes and in Insert tab. Then we're going to click on the beginning button. Click right here. And we're going to size it to... Now, if you make the shape, it doesn't matter because we're going to resize it later on. Close this out. No need to do that. No, no need to do that. Okay, so in the Format tab on the ribbon, we're going to resize this to 0 0.5 in both of the size boxes. But we're not done yet. We gotta adjust the positioning. So to do that, we're going to. You can either click on the dialog box where it says size position, or you can right click and click on size position, whichever one you want to do. Okay, so we're going to go to position. And we're going to adjust it to 3.47 on horizontal and 7 inches on vertical. So once you do that, close out the format shape pane. And as you can see, it's been properly positioned to the recommended measurements of the position that it wants us to be. Step 7. Create the following action buttons on slide 2 and size them to 0 0.5 high and 0 0.5 wide. All positions from are from top left corner of the slide. So we're basically applying the um, new action buttons. And of course, we're applying the different size horizontally. But the vertical position are the same. So we're going to do the four action buttons, back or previous, return, forward and end okay so the first one I'm going to create is back or previous so go to insert tab locate the action buttons at the very bottom of the shapes pane back or previous create that use the same size as the first one we created prior to this instruction and now we're going to adjust its positioning for the back or previous action button we're going to change the horizontal position to 0.59 and keep the vertical position at 7 so size and position again okay 0.59 7 that takes care of the action button next we're gonna apply the return action button same section action buttons return Draw that. It's almost close to 0 0.5, which is good. Just as long as you got the proper measurement. Horizontal positioning will be 4.96. 7 for vertical. There we go. Third one. Forward or next. Horizontal position for that one will be 1.99, vertical 7. And last, but by no means least, end. So go to PowerPoint again, same area. We're going to click on end. Definitely not close to 0 0.5. <laughs> Positioning for horizontal is 6.75 and vertical position is 7. Alright, so we created the action buttons already, so that completes step 7. Wait, you also have to copy and paste them through slides 3 through slides 9. So to do that, you will have to select all the action buttons. Make sure you select the, make sure you click and drag through, click, hold and drag through these action buttons right here don't select these you want to make sure you do the action buttons that's the only priority so we're going to apply these truth to slide 3 I mean from slide 3 to slide 9 so you copy and paste seven eight and nine all right, so now we've applied the action buttons from slide three to slide nine. Let us now go ahead and go to the next step. Step eight, 
Apply a floating animation to the physical violence equals power and control group on slide 8. Then set the animation to start with previous. Alright, so we're going to go to slide 8 and we're going to apply an animation to this text box right here. Now, as you can see, there are two text panes. So you want to click the one that's outside, not the one that's inside. Click the one that's outside because it affects the whole entire text for the animation to take effect. And we want to apply the float in animation. So go to animations tab on the ribbon, then click on float in. And as you can see, it's been applied to the text. But we're not done yet because we were set we are to set the animation to start with previous. So click on right here in the timing section, then click with previous. And with that it is done. We then apply it to the other one the other objects in the slide, which is the down arrow picture. So we're, this time we're applying the fly in. So go back to the PowerPoint, click on the down arrow, and click on fly in. And next, it wants us to adjust the effect option so that the arrow flies from, in from the top. Then set the animation to start after previous. So go ahead and select this effect options from the top, and then change this to after previous. Number 10. Apply a floating animation to non equals equality group. Then set the animation to start after previous. Now this, this is the same thing like the first part of like step 8, but this time we're doing one thing that's different. So that'll come after we do a few things for this for step 10. So first we're going to apply the float in. Oh wait, that's I'm sorry, that's for this float in. Okay, now select the arrow. Now set the animation to start after previous. Now we do something to the up arrow, which is the fly animation, and set the animation to start after previous. Step 12, we're almost done. Attach a play sound action to the up arrow arrow picture and then set the action to play the chime sound when clicked. Attach a play sound action to the down arrow click art and then set the action to play the explosion sound when clicked. So we're adding the sound effects to the up arrow and the down arrow for slide 8. So we're going to apply the chime sound effects for the up arrow and the explosion sound effects to the down arrow. Now to do this we will go to you can either go to the action button on the action section or you can go to the animation pane, which I did at first. So let's just go to the animation pane because if you and you want to make sure you have the right thing selected. Well, if you select the object from the um, slide, then it won't matter because it'll highlight the object you selected on the animation pane. So we're going to go with the up arrow first. So right click this, then click effect options. Okay, so here we are in the effect options for the fly in for the up arrow. So we're going to apply a sound and as you can see there are a list of sounds that you can use but we're going for chime for the up arrow and okay so I had a misconception with the animation pane I apologize for that but uh, it doesn't have the part where you actually click on the slide to make the sound effect take effect so we're gonna go with the action for now so we're going to go right here and we're going to play sound and we're going to click on chime. Action on click. There we go. Then you can test it out if you like. So we're going to do the same thing for the down arrow. We're going to apply the explosion sound effect. Now remember the up arrow requires a ch chime effect and the down arrow requires the explosion effect. So apply this to both of these and let's go ahead and give it a test run. Okay, so the sound effects have been successfully applied to the up and down arrows, so that completes step 12. Step 13, apply a wipe entrance animation to the smart art on slide 7. Okay, so we're going to go to slide 7 this time, and we're going to select the smart art graphic, not the text pane, we're going to select the smart art graphic, 
and we're going to apply the animation. We're going to apply the entrance fade. No, the wipe. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's the wipe. <clears throat> All right. So next, we're going to apply the effect options so that the steps flow from the top. So effect options again from the top. There we go. Then we're going to trigger this smart art animation using the down arrow call out four. So to do that, you can see that there's the orange button right here with the down arrow that says click. Select this. Wait, um, I'm sorry. Select the smart art graphic. Then we're going to go to trigger. And we're going to where it says on click off. And we're going to apply to the down arrow call out four. So we're going to test that out right now. And there we go. And for the last step, you can just use the slideshow from the beginning, click on all hyperlinks, action buttons, and triggers for the link, any links that do not work, exit the show immediately, and edit the link. Save and close the presentation, exit PowerPoint, and submit the file as directed. Okay, everyone, that concludes the tutorial on how to do Chapter 6 PowerPoint Greater Projects. This is the first one, and the second one I might work on tomorrow while I'm in school, so at least you'll know what to do. Well, since there are two Greater Projects, chances are the second one might be a little bit similar to this one. I'm not sure, but I might see that in the morning when I get to college in class. In class. <laughs> Sorry about that, tongue twister. But hope you enjoyed this tutorial to the fullest. If you did, hit the thumbs up button because it really keeps you going. And for those who are taking PowerPoints, you can use this to take advantage of the Greater Project, the first Greater Project on Chapter 6, if you're taking PowerPoint class. So, hope you enjoyed this tutorial to the fullest. This is Silver Plus CLA. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.